ladies and gentlemen, this is the third official Wine Wednesday with Vino. And we have special guests, Diana, here to make some food for us. It looks like tonight, um, what do you got on the menu? I'm making chicken tacos with a pineapple mango salsa. Hey. Um, all fresh ingredients, all the vegetables. Um, yeah, we're gonna kick I'm it off. I'm excited, I'm excited. And tonight we have the Apothic Inferno wine. Um, there, it's a red blend. There's Zinfandel uh, berry, uh, wine grapes in there, Merlot, and uh, sour grapes in there. It's aged uh, 60 years in whiskey barrels too, so. Sounds I'm good. excited. I'm ready to eat. I'm ready to drink and have a good time. So uh, let's get to it. What's good, ladies and gentlemen? We are officially on the third episode of Wine Wednesday with Vino. We have special guests, Anna. Hi. <laughs> she had made us tacos today. Um, I did. They were supposed to be shrimp tacos. Some people are allergic to shrimp. I'm allergic to shrimp. <laughs> So she then, said, wait, no. So then they're supposed to be steak tacos. Yeah. And this man also doesn't eat beef. I don't, I don't. So we have chicken tacos. We have to, we have to compromise when we came to chicken, but it looked lovely. It, it, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. So um, what actually, how long have you been cooking actually? Like two years now. Two years. So yeah. I started when I first started living on my own. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really have a choice. Yeah, I'm not a course. huge fan of eating out. Yeah, me um, too. So this is, was like a way for me to save money and also get creative. And yeah. then cooking is also a way to kind of clear my head a little bit. Yeah. So it all worked out. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, what would you say is your favorite dish? I would say this is actually one of my favorites, okay. but my favorite in general is all Bulgarian food. All Bulgarian. Because I grew up with Bulgarian food. Okay. So definitely, definitely. my favorite. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. And what do we have in here? What's what's all in the, the mix? So the first layer is just the chicken. The mm. next layer is a mango and pineapple salsa. It has cilantro, onion, tomatillos, jalapenos, garlic. Um, salt and pepper mm. and then the next layer is fresh smashed avocado mm. and on top we have red leaf lettuce Ooh. and they squeeze the lemon uh, the lime on top oh that sounds amazing yes. they're so good mm -hmm. that's good so it was purely you just kind of teaching yourself the steps and the ways to go about it was there any influence as far as like grandmother mom um, yeah. that you kind of took some of their cooking styles or secrets from? Yeah, so I grew up in a household where we did not eat out a lot at all. Yeah. So my mom always made Bulgarian food. So my mom was like my first resource okay. to find recipes. Yeah. Um, so that's how it all started mm -hmm. um, with Bulgarian recipes. But since I grew up in America for the most part, mm -hmm. I kind of expanded on that and okay. just kind of drove away from that yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But um, now I kind of make all types of food. I'm not a picky eater at all. So mm -hmm. I'll try anything. I'll try to make anything. Um, and yeah, and hope uh, it looks good too. Definitely, definitely. So Bulgarian dishes. Yes. What would you say is your favorite or is uh, a difficult dish to make? Or that just a takes long dish. to prepare, I would just say. Okay, um, most dishes take a while to prepare. <laughs> That's only because so most of them have to bake for a while. Okay. Or if they're stove top, then um, use like a pressure cooker or something like that, mm. but it still takes a while. Um, one of my favorite is a traditional called musaka. Yeah, and it's literally potatoes, and then you can put any type of ground meat in there. So I've done mm -hmm. ground Italian sausage, or ground beef, um, or ground pork. You can use any of that, mix that in there. And then it's, it has like paprika, Bulgarian spices, Definitely. carrots, onions, mushrooms, all the good stuff. Mm. And then you just bake it, and then cheese on top on broil in the oven. Okay. And there you go. As far as desserts, are you into like making desserts too? So... I'm not as into it mm -hmm. just because I'm more of a chocolate person, so okay. I don't even bake that much. It's more just Makes like candy. Sense. Yeah. Um, but baking wise, I've made like homemade cinnamon rolls before, okay. actually. Um, it was this like giant cinnamon roll. Ooh. It was like took up the size of the pan, but it turned out so, so good. I bet it was It fine. took like an hour to make though because really? it's so much dough. Yeah, yeah, it makes um, sense. Yeah, but other than that, baked goods, I mean, I've made like peach cobbler and stuff like Ooh, that. Ooh, peach cobbler. Yeah. It's, but peach cobbler's so simple. 
Okay. It's very simple. It is, it is, but that's one of my favorites. Yeah, favorites really good. The sweets. But yeah, definitely more of a meals yeah. maker. No, I feel that. I yeah. feel that. Well, that's dope. That's dope. That's real. Mom's the influence. Shout out definitely. to all moms out there. <laughs> I cook myself. Um, I definitely would say I got most of my influence from my grandmother, though. Got it. Yeah. My mom can cook too, don't get me wrong, but. Um, I was raised by my grandmother, aunt, and mother, and while they were kind of out doing the work, my grandma was coming to stay at home, make sure everything was all good. Shout out Grandma Susie. <laughs> what was your favorite thing your grandma made? Um, one of my favorite things that my grandma makes, that's a hard question. She makes, she specializes in fish. Like, okay. Um, She's really good at cooking like deer meat as well. Like it's what? Fun. So my family's from the south. My grandmother's from the south. So like a lot of the food we do get is like hunted. Like my grandfather hunts, my co my cousins hunt. Yeah. Um, so she is real good just at like southern dishes. Her yams are to die okay. for. Oh my god. So traditional southern food. Yeah, just <laughs> traditional southern food. Um, I mean, she steps out here and there my mom's mostly the one i would say that steps out like she'll go on you know the internet and find her own recipes but my grandma's pretty stern on like her signature yeah. which she's good but at. but those are the best recipes yeah yeah definitely 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 yeah. so yeah but that's interesting so two years you've been at this um could you see yourself taking it any further do you want to you know be uh. known for cooking <laughs> like that or what the only way I would probably step out is with a YouTube. Oh, okay. That's about it. Otherwise, my career is kind of set in stone at this yeah, point. I and I love like, what I do. Yeah. So I wouldn't really give that up. This is more of a hobby. I wouldn't really want to make it a task either. Like, the whole reason I love it is because I can do whatever I want with it. Yeah. I wouldn't want somebody else telling me what to do with it. I so, like yeah, stuff. probably just a YouTube. That's about it. That's yeah. solid. That's solid. Well, we're going to dive into this wine. It's the Apothic Inferno. Um, has, it's a red blend. It has three types of grapes in it. The Zinfandel, Merlot, and Zara. Um, very good. Aged in a, aged in whiskey barrel for like 60 years, I believe. Okay. Um, so it has that like cinnamon spice kind of taste, you know. Okay. Um, it's like a wine start, but a whiskey finish, so. I'm excited. To I'm excited too. That sounds really good. Thing open real quick. See, I never cut the top off. I was just really. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. Oh, that's funny. So just straight up in and out. Yep, it still works. Yeah, no, it definitely does. It definitely does. It, it doesn't feels look like as nice, yeah. but it definitely works. It seems a little harder too. It's just like, uh, I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> let me just cut the foil off real quick. So, do you drink a lot of wine? Um, I do. I'm really starting to get into it more and more. Um, but I definitely, I, I, I started this path. I would say two months ago. Okay. And um, at first it was just me just trying different things. Mm -hmm. Then it was just noting down the taste, the where they're grown from. This is actually grown, the grapes here are grown in California. Okay. Um, so I just, you know, just building a passion for it, you know, yeah. something that I could like enjoy doing. Um, kind of like how you, with you. Yeah. Know, like I definitely do music. Music's my uh, stronghold, mm -hmm. but I was uh, like, you know, why not jump into this? Yeah, so, definitely. It's like, let's get it, you know? I'm excited to try it. That's that's a good pour. <laughs> that's a good <laughs> pour right there. Oh, that's bet. a strong pour. <laughs> oh man. Oh, do we have to? Yeah. Get, <laughs> you know, the swirl and the sniff okay. and taste. Oh, do we keep going? <laughs> what this does is kind of wraps the alcohol around the glass and then the legs um, kind of determine how however fast the legs glow um, shows uh, okay. the alcohol percentage in the wine. Wow, learn something new every day. Yeah. 
Are we gonna cheers? Yeah, let's do that, yeah, for sure. Tell me how you like and it. And then too. you smell it. Yeah, smell get the smell for it. Mmm, like that. <laughs> like that. And then we gonna sip. Usually I let it air out for like 30 minutes, but you know, we're just gonna dive oh, right in. That. You like this? Yeah, it's good. I'm not very picky though. <laughs> With wine, I love wine. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. It's, 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 a, it's a nice one. You taste, what do you taste? Like, I'm, don't ask me. <laughs> I taste wine. That's what I taste. Oh, yeah, that's I taste some grapes. That's about mm. it. <laughs> yeah, you don't I'm not taste good. the cinnamon. I'm sorry. It has it has a little spice to it. I can feel that yeah. for sure. Mm. Um, yeah, I just taste the kick in the back. That's about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I can't oh, no, contribute more to this. It is all good. It is all good. I just wanted to at least see if you could taste like this. It definitely has a kick. Like I still feel it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really good. Good, it's good really stuff. Good. It's really good. Yeah, a positive inferno. So when it comes to wines, I know you say you're not, you know, the biggest expert. But if you had to choose between like a white wine and a red wine, which would you? It depends. Um, if I were out with friends, probably a white wine. And oh. then if I was just like hanging out at home, probably a red wine. Oh, okay. I don't know why. The red wine just gives you more of like a chill vibe. It does. It makes it makes me sleepy sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It just makes you want to chill. Mm -hmm. So that's that's perfect for that. But it's crazy because I actually have had this uh, white wine. It's called Sleeper. And it actually it makes it helps me you tired. go to sleep. It really? It makes me tired. Was yeah. it made for that though, or does it just um, so happen? It just, I think tired. it just called sleeper. I think that's just kind of like the branding that they have with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it definitely is a will knock you out for Got sure. It. It's it, it gets me sleepy at least for sure. Yeah, that's why I said that's a good pour because that's a lot. <laughs> that she's like, make me sleep. Whoa. yeah, she's it's like, already like <laughs> past my bedtime. It's <laughs> I am dead. That is funny. Yeah, but really good wine. Yeah. What's your favorite? Um, I, I go through it. This is actually the Apothic Inferno. It's definitely one of my favorites. Another one that I like a lot is called a Sebastiani. Okay. It's a Cabernet. Um, it's very good. It's very good Got wine. It. Um, what else do I like to drink? Those, I would say those are my two right now. Okay. And then the Gallo family, like... Cabernets are pretty good as well, and it's okay. not expensive. Like that's the reason I like that one. It's not too expensive, and um, it does the job. Like it's a good, it's a real good Cabernet. So I enjoy it a lot. Um, still, you know, out there tasting, yeah, seeing different trying things. them out, yeah, seeing what I like. And then Sleeper, I like Sleeper too. I'm not a big fan of the white wine, mm -hmm. but I will indulge in any wine pretty much. But I'm definitely a red guy, Got definitely it. Cabernet guy, for sure. Got it. Are there any um, wineries out here that you've tried? Mm, they actually have this one called the Wine Experience that I go to um, on Southland. Oh, okay. Um, and like, it's just like a whole experience. You sit down and, you know, kind of like they bring yeah. in wines and stuff like that. Then I actually, um, just this last Sunday, I went to this spot called Barcelona Wine Bar. Okay. I'm um, in the Rhino District of Denver, and uh, it's a phenomenal place. Yeah. I mean, the vibes are right. The mood is right. The wine is excellent. Yeah. You know, the food. They bring out, like, all different kinds of cheeses that complement the wine. That go with so, the wine. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's an experience in itself, for sure. Got it. Um, yeah. yeah. I haven't been to any wineries out here. That's why really? I was asking. Yeah, no. My favorite wine that I've tried... It's in Indiana. There was a winery out there. Mm. And they have like this one that literally tastes like plums. Really? And you just taste the plums. So remember how you asked me if I could taste yeah. it? I think it's because I didn't know what was in it. I have to like know exactly what I'm supposed yeah. to be tasting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but they have one that literally just tastes like a plum. And it's mm. so good. That sounds fire. Yeah. That sounds so fire. Mm -hmm. And another one that I actually like that I forgot to mention is this one called... Um, no curfew. Okay. Uh, it's another cabinet. Um, fire again. Uh, I'm I have a feeling you think all the wines are fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not all. Oh, I've definitely had some that were like very aged, mm -hmm. and I don't. I don't know the ones that I. The wines that I've had that have aged for a while. 
um, I don't find good taste in them. Some of them are like too sweet. I'm kind of like, I like a balance. I do like my wines dry, mm -hmm. but a little sweetness, but mostly like, you know, kind of just stern yeah. mm -hmm. more than just sweet. And I've noticed like with a lot of aged wines that I've had tried, um, it just is like a, a raisin taste. Like you okay. could tell too, because it's like, a brown it your wine it comes out brownish kind of. oh okay yeah but that's how you know it's like aged and stuff like that but um i always thought the aged ones were the more popular ones like they're more fancy and more I people mean, want that that's just because it's nostalgia Got you know it. what i'm yeah. saying like everybody tries to sell you on that which is dope like it is good to have like it does kind of get richer in taste, I would say, the more it ages. Yeah. But um, it to me, it's nostalgia. Because I've had some wines that are like 2015, mm -hmm. um, even 2018s, that are like fire. Still good, and I've yeah. I've had some wines that are like 1992, older than me. And you're like, no thanks. And I'm like, this is not that good. Got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's really, I think wine is definitely a subjective thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, people have, it's almost like music or any other crap people yes. get into. It's like, what? Even food. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what your taste buds feel. Um, but that's why I enjoy it. I feel like it's an art. It's like dope, the process of how it's made. So, yeah. You know. Definitely. I'm just on for the ride. <laughs> have you ever thought of like, you know, people make like their own wine, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you ever thought of that? That's definitely. Definitely up your alley up my alley it will be coming soon i probably would name it after me vitorio yeah um so yeah i'm um, that's already in the i just want to get kind of a history around wine mm -hmm. see the whole process like you know just really get embedded with the craft and like before i before you try to make your yeah, own yeah exactly. for sure mm -hmm. you taste know? all that's out there first yeah definitely that would be really cool though. Because I feel like, and even, I don't think it would take that much. Because with liquor and alcohol, a lot of it has to do with packaging anyway. So, yeah. Um, and I'm. You'll be fine with the artistic yeah, yeah, part. Yeah, the of artistic it for part sure. is cool. But I definitely yeah. want to have, like, I enjoy this because of the flavoring of it. Yeah. So I definitely do want to get more knowledgeable about just how to evoke certain flavors and how to bring this out and stuff like that but yeah it's been fun it's been fun yeah i've definitely been excited on this journey for sure. you should definitely try that out to make your own i wonder what the bottle will look like <laughs> me too me too me too i'll definitely uh see you the designs when i'm uh, through with it but yeah this is my wine <laughs> tell me what you think <laughs> send you a bottle mm -hmm. and stuff um don't Wait. ask me the undertones of it though. <laughs> Don't ask me what's in it. It's like, uh, what is I'll this be like, it's like? good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, fans, um, that's a wrap. It is Wine Wednesday with Vino. We're about to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. She has made these lovely tacos. We're gonna indulge on that. Um, feel free to like, share, subscribe comment any of you guys' favorite wines that you may like or enjoy and uh yeah i'll see you next time on wine wednesday with vino i thank you for coming out and then sharing this time with me and making this fabulous food and all that so thank you diana thanks for having me oh, this was so fun we're signing out <laughs>